Morning, guys. Um, injuries for today. George Kittle, toe won't practice. Ambry Thomas, ankle will be limited. Oren Burks with his shoulder will be limited. Go ahead. With George's toe, is that a, is that a turf toe or is it a bruise or what's any concern with that? No, it's just, just a toe. Yeah. Tyler, you have uh, a few, not too many, but key players who played in the last Super Bowl against Kansas City. I'm just wondering, how do you think that experience shaped them? Uh, some of them have become your great leaders. Um, and also, how did it shape you? Um, I mean, I think all those guys, for the most part, were young guys. And it was their first one. And I think um, always when you go your first time, you experience a lot of stuff. But I think when you go your second time, you know all the stuff you experienced. It's about one thing. It's about what happens in those three hours. And uh, I think it's real cool for those guys who have gone to be able to talk to players who it's their first time, kind of help them not get caught up in stuff, especially guys who are rookies and guys like Debo and things like that. So um, having experience always helps. Well, uh, looking at Charvarius Ward in Kansas City and thinking about bringing him here, how do you think he's grown as a player from then to now? Um, and we asked him to do a little bit more, just the coverages, just the way their scheme was. Um, not more, different things. You know, he was primarily always bumped back then and um, played a lot of two shell defense. And we mix it up a little with off in our three deep and the bump when we're doing man and stuff. So uh, we had to see him do some things here that he hadn't done before. And his, his game's grown. He really can do anything you ask him to do. Uh, after the game, Nick talked about how this was the perfect matchup. Mm -hmm. You know, the Chiefs are on top of the football world and have been. Holmes, Reed, how do you view the challenge in front of you guys from just the standpoint of you're facing a team with a quarterback and a coach that have won multiple Super Bowls? Um, I mean, I think it's not a coincidence why they have. I mean, I think the quarterback is as hard to beat as anyone who's ever played the game. Uh, the things he can do from a talent standpoint, um, and then you pair that up with his scheme with Andy, how Andy runs a team. Um, with Mahomes' experience now. I mean, that's why no matter what type of game it is, whether it's low scoring, high scoring, um, whether they're struggling or not, I mean, they always have a chance. He's gonna, if they can keep it close, he's really tough to stop. And when you can always have a chance and you also got a really good defense, you got a great coaching staff, a great head coach, um, that's usually a very good formula to win most games. Uh, what did you hear about Nick giving those Saturday speeches or talks to them with the team uh, for a couple of years now? Did you kind of pick him for that? What, what, kind of led to that happening? Um, I just, I always pick someone differently every day to break down the team. I always just try to surprise someone and do it pretty randomly. It's, um, it kind of keeps everyone on their toes a little bit. And um, I started, I did it randomly for the first time with Nick some Saturday and uh, he did a good job and we won. So I think I did it the next Saturday and he did a little bit better job and we won. And I think it was towards the end of the year. And then we just started with that the following year and it's kind of just, since then it's become our tradition and it's Nick's gotten really good at it. I remember he's always been good at it, but it's funny how guys who are um, so confident in everything they do, they're just not used to always speaking in front of groups. And he used to tell me that was the most nervous he'd be throughout the whole week. He'd start getting nervous about it on Wednesdays. Um, and he, I think earlier this year, he thanked me. He's like, hey, thanks for doing that, by the way. I, I've gotten better at it. I'm not as nervous anymore. So, um, and he's really good at it. Everything he says, he thinks through. And um, Nick doesn't waste words because he doesn't use many of them. When you were considering drafting him, I mean, he's not, obviously not a man of a lot of words. What, what, what was his personality like then? And has it evolved over? The I um, I mean, the only, I mean, you get to hear all the reports and everything, and all the um, work that our personnel department does for years, but. I mean, the only time you really get to know someone is when you get to hang out with them. And we had him in for dinner. And so I got to sit with the dinner with them. And, you know, people can trick you all the time and things like that. But what was so cool about Nick was it, there was no tricking. And just like I think how he talks to you guys, how he always is, Nick is himself. He is very true to what he says. He doesn't just make stuff up. If, if he doesn't have something to say, he's not going to say it. So he was a guy that was very easy to connect to with the dinner just because you could tell how he was acting as who he was and really enjoyed him from the beginning. And um, he's always been that guy that we met on the first day and um, can't say enough good things about Nick. Kyle, he plays really hard, I think, in all three phases of the game through your tenure here. When you watch that film against Detroit and you watch that second quarter uh, halfback toss to Gibbs, what did you think of the pursuit effort of your defensive lineman on that play? And is that in line with your culture here? No, not at all. I mean, that's kind of what I was referring to on, I think, our conference call on Monday. Um, but it's, you know, and I know it looked bad on the clip that you guys have and stuff, but it's, um, 
yeah, we know it's not our culture. We don't want to have one play like that. I think we had about two to three in that game, which um, is too much for us. We don't want to ever have one, but it wasn't just the D-line. Uh, there was a few backside people who weren't going and they're expecting someone else to make the tackle. And whenever you're expecting someone else to make the tackle, um, bad things happen. Did that, did that surprise you just you know, coming out of the bye, for example, you guys had lots of energy, you were sharp on defense. Did, did you expect that same um, type of play coming out of you know the rest that you got before the playoffs started? Uh, yeah, and, and I think we did. I, I think when I, I just understand how social media works, and I understand when a clip looks bad and it goes around, that's everything. But um, that, that was a few bad clips in the game, which I bet you I can go find those in a lot of games. Um, but I don't question at all our our lack of effort and how hard we work and how hard we go and run to the ball always. Um, were we 100%? No, um, especially on a couple big runs that really looked really bad. Um, but. That's on a few plays, which aren't acceptable, but I'm not sitting here acting like that was the whole reason. That's why they got a few extra yards on those two plays, but that game was more about how we played run defense, just not guys, um, not all 11 guys running on every single play. After, after 2018, you'd lost, you had two bad seasons. You know how that goes in the NFL, a lot of noise. How was Jed with you and John, you know, coming out of that year and into 2019 before you? Kind of uh, he was awesome. It's exactly how he was when we sat down to um, for the interview. Um, you know, we you never want to have those records, but we also were realistic before we started, and you know, we were trying to build it to have a legit shot. The fourth year was kind of our goal and stuff, and um, it, it happened the third year, which was great. But after those first two seasons, you know, it's, we started the first season out really rough, but we ended great. Um, the second season was really tough, especially losing our quarterback for the whole year. Um, but we did some things we were proud of towards the end, and even though we were real disappointed with our record that year, it did lead to getting Bosa, so that was a good thing. And um, but he was he was always positive. I think the hardest year was the COVID year, just because we felt we had built our team. You know, we had a tough Super Bowl loss, and um, we weren't sure if we were going to play till about that early July, and then I felt like we went right from the Super Bowl to the season, and that was the toughest year, just because it wasn't like what we expected. So did you ever feel like? seat going into 2019 or did he make it clear you were good um we never had the discussion but i mean as a coach you know you're always on the hot seat but no it was there was no difference in our relationship or anything um going into year three as there was the day i was hired what makes the chiefs run defense run game tough to stop the run game um i mean they got a good runner um he runs hard he never he is always the same he's one of the more consistent players in this league um, every single run, first run to the last run, to whenever you turn on the clip, cold weather on the road, at home, uh, he runs extremely hard. He's our type of runner that we like. Um, and that's, I'd say, the first, that's the best thing. And they got some good blockers, they got a scheme they mix up. And um, when you're real scary in the pass game, too, that always helps the run game. How you the COVID year uh, being the most difficult? What, what was so difficult about it for you? And was there anything that you were able to take away looking back on it that you What was the beginning of the question? Year that, you, that you talked about it being so difficult. Was there anything you took away from that that you think has made you a better coach or made your team better or closer? Any, anything like that? Um, I mean, I, I mean, the hardest thing with the COVID year was I think you didn't get a chance to finish the year before a little bit. First time we were reviewing the Super Bowl together was training camp. Um, so I thought that was a little bit just different. And sitting there in July as a coach, it's a little bit easier not knowing whether you're going to play or not because. I don't have the biggest routine, workout routine to get ready for a coaching season. Uh, I think that's harder for the players, just being in limbo and having the COVID situation and not really knowing you're playing until then and then trying to get the guys ready and being in a stadium where there were no people was just weird. And then having to overcome the injuries is what made it the toughest. So, um, and I don't know, COVID was miserable. How did that year compare to coming up short than the following two years the answer championship. I mean, I'm sure it's a different kind of thing. It was just totally different because we got kicked out of our state. We got kicked out of here. We had to go live in a hotel where COVID was, um, didn't seem as big of a deal because outside of our windows, the whole state was open. We got to look at a Dave and Buster's, a movie theater, and everyone was out. But we got kicked out of here because we couldn't practice football outside. And then we were in NFL rules where we're in a hotel for a month where you're not allowed to see each other. So we couldn't have meals together. We couldn't have meetings together. We couldn't sit in the lobby together. So I kind of, it was like nice jail cells. Like, and we got let out for recess, which was practice. And then we had to go right back or we, you'd get fined. Um, so it was 
something we I hope we never go back to. Chiefs run game. What about your run game? How how do you view how productive it's been in the playoffs and how essential is that? Obviously. Um, I mean, it's. It's, I think it's hard to win consistently in this league if you can't run the ball. I mean, no matter how good of a passing game you have, no matter how good of a defense, um, I don't, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can do it for here and there and always pull it off, but and the most consistent way to win is to be balanced and to put pressure on everybody. And um, we love being able to stick with the run game, so you make people force it. I mean, you make people defend it. And if people defend it, uh, everything gets a little bit easier. People can stop your run game without committing to it. Everything's a lot harder. What did you learn from the last Super Bowl experience in terms of practice, like what you need to get done this week versus what you can accomplish once you're in Vegas? Um, I was real happy with our preparation last time. Um, I just, you know, I had been to a Super Bowl before as a coach, you know, you know, just four years before that. I think I went to six just as a family member growing up and just always hearing about it and watching it. I've been paying attention to stuff my whole life. So it's, you know, I'm just always, I'm glad that the Super Bowls we were, were in that we've have a week before we go. Uh, like I know John Lynch, they had to go um, like that Monday after they won the NFC Championship in Philly. So I couldn't imagine that. But um, I've always was told, and we did that way in Atlanta. We've done that here. But you try to get as much in this first week as possible. And when you get out there, we go through it again. But it is different. Our Monday is totally different with the media deal. Um, our routine's off because you got to you got to do these press conferences every day. So you get about an hour off from all your normal time. So when you usually do red zone and stuff, you're two hours behind, a little more tired, and so all that stuff adds up. And if you put stuff off to that week and think it's going to be a normal week, um, you're going to get to that Thursday or Friday and not quite feel as Comfortable. Is the full game plan installed this week? Yes. Yeah. Last first game with your team was against the Chiefs last season. How have you seen him evolve from that game to this point, and your offense evolve from that game to now? Yeah. He knows the guys' names. He he knows the runs that we're calling instead of just guys pointing him to the direction. Um, I mean, that was amazing. We didn't plan on playing him at all. I think we I think he got here on a Friday afternoon. And then I told John, no way. But then when I talked to him on the phone and the way he was talking to me, I was like, we better send this guy a playbook. He might be playing because um, he's adamant that he can do it. And then when we played him, he was he was definitely right. So um, that was a sign of what we had. Um, he was amazing in that game, and he's been the same dude ever since. All right, thanks, guys.